Here we go then. Warframe meets Destiny and the rest was history. Now, the first Ascendants open beta is currently live for free for all those who are wanting to check it out. And I've already managed to sink quite a few hours into the game. So this video is going to be focused on comparison factors like similarities, but also improvements to be made on core systems and mechanics. Alrighty then, up first we got comparisons. Now that first sentence that I said was pretty accurate. And let's look at the first elements here because in all my time, I have ever seen new looter shooters arrive, I have never felt a more connecting game to Warframe than the First Ascendant. And believe me, I could attest to that. We have Marshy ranks available, but unlike Warframe, you won't have to go ahead and do any tests here, nor will you have to go and wait daily to increase your MR ranking. These tests will go ahead and give you bonuses to basically your capacity costs and limit slots, increasing them over time as you continue to earn more and more ranks. It's a something to do in the background kind of thing, but hey, we're already used to that. From there, we've got our descendants. Now, these are the core constructs of the game. Ranging in with four abilities and a passive, these descendants are switchable as you please on the go. Ultimately, changing how you approach missions with some being focused offensively and some even defensively as your examples. Every descendant is compiled together with four main ingredients. Code, catalyst, stabilizer, and cells. So when you have all of these combinations, you can begin crafting your descendant in your foundry-like research area. Within each descendant comes a modification area called modules. In here, you can apply mods to your character and make them stronger in particular areas, such as survival with health and shields. You could even go ahead and enhance your abilities with damage, range, and duration, or even pop in particular skill modules that can ultimately change how that specific ability functions whenever these modules are applied. Now, these modules will be requiring a cost to use, and you will have your module capacity cost limit. So don't forget to add in your additional settings to increase your max capacity with energy activators, or heck, even make sure that you have specific socket types matching the corresponding mod slotted in to lower their total cost by half if they match the correct socket. And yes, the weapons will have a very similar pattern to what I've already explained here too. So you won't just be combining them for mixed elements. However, that's most see the difference there. And even for one last cheeky point, uh, Void Relics are back of the menu, boys. But no, look, for real, you could see the similarities, right? Now, at this point in the video, I will go and make one thing clear. I have no issue with influence. Influence! And taking the good elements out of already existing concepts and ideas, because guys, that's been done since the dawn of time. It's human nature to compare, and with structures like these, it eases a specific audience into the game that you're seeking out to reach. However, I will admit it's a little too close to home. In open beta, we don't have much more access on top of these systems for descendants. So you're basically comparing apples to oranges and look, they're both green. I mean, I'm colorblind, so don't you dare judge me. Components in games can be added in tastefully, but as I continue, I'm hoping I can find that spark of originality in the first descendant. And I do hope that the whole game concept isn't just based fully off what everyone else has and coin it, but in Instead, taking those working systems and advance on them, make them better now. That's how you beat competition at their own game. Fighting fire with fucking volcanoes. Up next, we got the Destiny 2 factor, and I won't lie, perhaps I'm stretching here, but let's have a little look at some of these enemy types that exist in the game. Now, this goes based off feeling, and with a good amount of experience backing it too, some of these enemies are a little too close to home once again. With the likes of factions such as the Hive, the Fallen, and even the Cabal to be mentioned, with even enemy types that range from shooting the middle of their shield because it's their weak point to big bull shaped robots with glowy eyes and even being chased down by swarm like mentality. Grab a sword. Ooh. Entering these regions to go ahead and complete missions and quests within them in an open world like area whilst also coming across a straggling player or two also in the region definitely seems familiar and something a lot of us can go and relate to. Now this isn't solely specific to one type of game but in comparison factors you could always transfer some existing existing gameplay and sub games over to this and you already get the idea and the concept that awaits you. Speaking of waiting, social emotes! Now, such is the nature of looter shooters, you are expect to switch and flex between weaponry due to accumulation and the first ascendant does exactly that, so it's hit the nail on the head right here. Nothing beats feeling empty handed before a mission, then halfway through it, opening up your inventory and looking at the absolute masses of weapons that seem to have come from literally nowhere. The next thing you 
know your party is patiently waiting for you to bust out your little notepad and examine thoroughly every little number to see if you can get a slight increase to that DPS, only to replace it in the next 10 minutes. So then, from here on in the video, I want to take a quick second to say thank you for liking this video. You're just too kind. No, please, please. Oh, you just subscribed as well. Oh, God, you're so kind, you saucy. But let's talk about some systems that I feel could use improving and the likes versus the dislikes. After all, that's what open beta is all about. The cons. So here is a list of all things that I feel are closer to my heart. And I would like to see improvement on before the game ideally wants to consider shipping itself out there. And please don't get me wrong. I say these things with consideration and resortment to improvement, not to damage the brands. It's a work in progress and open beta is all about feedback, limits and stress testing. Now, as you see, most of this list is self-explanatory and I shouldn't really need to deep dive into them too much. But if I can pick out two major concepts that are genuinely a no-no from me, then it would have to be the player collision and the CC or revive immunities. There's nothing like rubber banding your way past your teammates to chase a life sphere only to be blocked by the greatest NFL lineup of your life. Yeah, that's your teammate. And he doesn't even know he's doing it. Now, this needs to go or at least add vault into ledges because some of my teammates have the thickest heads. You may as well consider that part of concrete a damn ledge. And for the CC revived immunity, there's usually a saying that goes something like, oh, these developers don't play their own game. And it's reasons exactly like this that showcase examples of why people say these types of comments. Now, I refuse to believe that anyone from the TFD team comfortably agrees that facing four to five enemy tracker units was fun and engaging. So let me go ahead and paint you a little picture. You can die, then you go to get revived and 0.1 second later be instantly frozen, wait one, two seconds for the freeze to wear off, break free, and attempt a roll and dodge only to get instantly frozen again, merely pixels after inputting your commands. Then what happens? Huh? Yep. Dead. We ought to agree that mechanics such as these need improvement and cannot be in the game at launch. It causes frustration and it's probably the biggest offer from the combat experience thus far. The pros. So we've got the pros and I'm going to put emphasis mostly on one here. The first Ascendant can improve and yes, it's got comparisons from already existing games. But before you pick up that pitchfork and defend your favorite looter shooter, ask yourself quietly, why? Now, I welcome new games to our genre as I've seen too many come and too many go. And whenever something can squeeze its way through, I want nothing but success for the game because after all, it's the players who reap the rewards. This game is not an upcoming game killer. It's not going to replace anything that is already around. Games like Warframe and Destiny 2 are far too big and far too successful in their own rights that the only thing that would kill those games would be themselves. But what if we added some spice, a little competition for developers to go head to head against? Nothing malicious, nothing dramatic, but hopefully good quality content that down the line competes against each other, really lighting the fire inside developers to inspire and push more to please not only themselves and their work effort, but their community, their player bases. You see, in the time that I played the first Ascendant, I've enjoyed myself and it could be the honeymoon phase, but I'm genuinely interested to see what happens down the line and what endgame could potentially look like. More games, more options, more benefits. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this one. And although I could say an awful lot more, I think this is good enough to wrap up my first impressions and comparisons breakdown video. I will be playing my Warframe, I'll be playing my Destiny, and I'll be checking out more games like The First Ascendant. So as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, support me with a cheeky like and come subscribe if you're new, but I'll be catching you guys again in the next video.